you know, when I was uh, when I was younger in my career and even in my academic life, I must say I was very high-minded. You know, I used to say to myself, when I have something really important to say, I'll say it. So what that meant is I, I sort of rarely said anything, um, you know, in class. I, again, I just, you know, when there was something so important to say. So let me tell you the dirty little secret of business. No one has anything really important to say. Just say something. You know, if you go into a meeting and you don't participate, people assume maybe you're bored. Maybe you don't have any ideas. Maybe you're not interested. Um, you know, really, as I say, urge yourself, push yourself out of your comfort zone and, and participate. Um, it really, really will make a difference. Again, you want to confidently express your views. And finally, you know, your reputation. Let me assure you, I've had now, I hate to admit it, um, a 30-year career in business. I graduated in 1982. It's, uh, I, I can't believe it, actually. Uh, but um, I have certainly learned over time that life is a long game and it is a very, very small world out there. So never ever underestimate the importance of building a good reputation. It really is one of the most powerful tools in determining your success. You know, I have people in my office that, you know, you'd be doing a performance appraisal and they'll be really sweating, you know, at every word and phrase that you might have in that performance appraisal. If someone's interested in you for a job, they phone up, they phone me and say, hey, what do you think of Bob or Mary? Um, your reputation, what people say about you, um, is really going to carry the day. So, and it isn't about just how smart you are um, or how talented you are. Your reputation in many respects will be about how you treat other people. If you treat other people well, um, that'll get noticed. If you're a jerk, if people don't want to be on your team, uh, believe me, uh, those, that uh, has a long tail on it. And you will, again, you will be amazed at where it pops up. So always think about your reputation, how people view, and again, not just your capabilities, but your personal character. It's really, really important. And let me conclude, and, and after I, I conclude, we'll uh, definitely open it up to your questions. I'd love to hear from you. But I want to talk a little bit about mental toughness. And it's, you know, it is germane to this conversation. We've ta touched on it in many ways on the, on the whole notion of ethics. Um, and I'd like to um, tell the story um, by talking about an actually a really important uh, milestone in my life. Um, so January of 2011 was a very exciting time for me. Um, I was about to embark on a big trip. I'll tell you that in a minute. But uh, at the same time, our finance leadership team was, uh, we were just launching our own blog. Uh, we're actually um, the only department of the bank uh, that has our very own blog and our senior people we, uh, we basically write up, no it isn't our communications group that does it, uh, we write up our own views on life, on events, on you know, how we think about leadership, work-life balance, a variety of topics and people weighed in. It's absolutely fantastic. So we were launching uh, the blog. So uh, my blog uh, was uh, entitled Finding Your Own Personal Peak. And I talked about my up upcoming trip to Mount Kilimanjaro. I was honest in saying that for me, that trip was about pushing my own boundaries and getting out of my comfort zone. And partly for me, actually, about creating a new self-identity. Uh, because, you know, we all have self-limiting beliefs, and many of mine are related to sports aptitude. So my advice to my team was pick something you never thought you could do and go for it the bigger the better and say it out loud um, because then you're committed. Now why did I share my motivations that way? You know, I talk about um, some, probably come out some of my own kind of deepest struggles in some ways. You know, I think a lot of it, um, and it's back to culture and leadership, a lot of it is about humble leadership and being authentic and human. And I think if all of us uh, can, can share um, in, in some ways who we are, it helps us relate to each other better. So Mount Kilimanjaro uh, is the highest mountain in Africa at over 19,000 feet. Uh, we were a group of eight women with two female guides from Toronto and a support team for the re from the region. Uh, we lived on that mountain for seven days. So I will always remember summit night. Uh, the way it works is uh, you embark, um, you, you, you start to summit at midnight. 
um, and you, the climb is basically about seven hours uh, till you get to the top. So a couple of uh, nights before, our guides talked to us about how to get psychologically ready for that last night. So it's cold, you're at high altitude, uh, you're nervous, and they said, you know, at some point that night, you'll feel like you can't go on. And you are going to need to dig deep. It's what you say to yourself at that moment that will make a difference in whether you get to the top or not. What will you say to yourself at your darkest moment? So if we believe in ourselves, I'm certain that each of us can achieve everything in our power. But so often, what we say to ourselves is negative. And that's not just true of us as students or as business professionals. You know, how do we often do we dwell on what might go wrong or why we might not be as good as we can be? So again, I think in many respects that holds us back. So anyway, back to Kilimanjaro. I'm happy to report that we all got to the peak in good health and in good spirits. It really was pure exhilaration. So the company we traveled with is called Live Out Loud Adventures, and they've taken numerous groups to uh, the top of Kilimanjaro, typically all female groups, with 100% success. So then people often ask you, well, what is the secret? You know, why have they had such great success with these various groups? Is it physical fitness? You know, people always say that to me, you must be in great shape to have done this. Was it about having the right gear? Was it about managing altitude? You know, so many people suffer um, because of the altitude. So yeah, I'd say all of those things are, are definitely important. But to me, what was the most important was about managing your own attitude. As I just said, it's really about mental toughness. And all of you have shown enormous mental toughness in your academic careers. You work hard, you work to deadlines, you have constant exams, constantly being tested tested. The CA exams uh, require that perseverance and that hard work, that mental toughness. <clears throat> I look at a career in finance. Uh, finance professionals have it in spades. I say this to my team all the time. You know, I, I tell them don't ever underestimate how mentally tough you are. Uh, our roles are very challenging. Um, you know, the, the, the standards are very high. Uh, constant change. You know, the, the mental toughness is enormous. So when you combine you know, strong personal character, hard work, good people skills with mental toughness, you have everything you need to have a very successful and rewarding career. So to, let, to conclude, we can all reach for the top and we can all achieve our personal peak. You have many mountains to climb and you have so much that lies ahead of you. And when you get to the top, uh, the views really will be breathtaking. So I wish you all the very best in your dreams and goals. Go get them. So with that, let me pause and, uh, and take your questions. That's very kind. Thank you. Any, yes? Um, you finished off talking about the Enron CFO. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Andy Fasto. Andy Fasto. Uh, but you said the last thing you said to that reporter before he left the room. Um, I was kind of waiting for you to finish that. <laughs> I was like, what happened? Well, I know what happened, but um, I just wanted yeah. to think, uh, hear from you um, what, about what he so, so he, you know, so the group went in and tried to explain the black box and how all of this worked. And, and frankly, you know, she wasn't really buying any of it. And, you know, she amongst others, at, at that time there was a, a really a chorus of concern over, you know, what's, you know, what was, what was really going on and how much of this was a house of cards. And um, as those doubts continued uh, to increase, it, 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 really, um, it really started to paralyze the organization and really, um, really developed into a, a full-blown uh, liquidity crisis for them and, and really just that just accelerated the downfall of the company. 
But uh, I, I thought what was uh, what was interesting is that uh, when he sort of said, you know, hey, I don't care what you write, but don't make me look bad, which was just uh, which was just another really interesting uh, insight in all of that. So, as I say, I, you know, Enron was uh, was such an enormous tragedy. Uh, when, when you look at, as I say, all all of the destruction in, in that process, and 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 so much so much greed and wrongdoing.